Well, praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. This is the good day that God promised us, the day of life, the day of strength, the day of encouragement. The word of the Lord says to us that if we walk in the counsel of the word of God, God would bless us in everything we set our hands to do. But what does that mean? In 2 Timothy, Paul tells us that we should rightly divide the word of God and that we should always cut it straight. We're going to talk about that today. <laughs> so I want you to grab yes. your Bible. I want you to get a hold of your notebook or call a friend and tell them to join us today because we are going to talk about the legitimacy of the word of God and just how we should interpret it. Now, God loves teamwork. God loves for his children to work together. And as always, joining me are my two outstanding co-hosts, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and Pastor Tim Baldwin from Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast. Pastors, how are you today? And greet our audience. Doing well, Bishop. Thank you for having me on the team. Amen. So those of you at home, you already know how this goes. Get your pen, your pad ready. I always tell you to move the coffee table just in case you have a few friends over. But let's get ready to have a good time. It's a hot topic. Amen. Pastor Tim. Hey, Christian and Culture family, we are back. As I always say, I, I, I'm excited for today's show and uh, hope you are too. And so let, let's, uh, let's jump in. Gentlemen, does everything in the Bible have the right to be applied today? Or are some things just principles for living and we have to extract the principle? Yeah, th there are things that, that are in the Bible that's not apply to today, okay. right? And when I say today, I mean to today's believer. Okay. You know, uh, we, we, we talked about it a little bit uh, in, a, in another episode where there are certain scriptures, and I referenced uh, Joshua yes. 1, 3, when the Lord says, mm -hmm. wherever you step, you know, this, the, uh, uh, wherever you step, I'm giving you that land. And so that, that will be one example of something that does not apply to us mm -hmm. today. Sure. And so there are things that are in the Bible that were for Israel, that were for historical Israel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there are things that are for the body at large. Okay. Now there are things that may not be for us, but could be an encouragement to us, mm -hmm. right? Romans 15, four, I wanna say, says that those things that were, that were written uh, four time were written for, for our benefit. Yes. And so that we could have hope. And yes. so, so I believe that, that it could be used for hope and, and benefit. But there are some things that, that, that does not apply to us okay. today. All right. Yeah. Now, given what uh, Pastor Tim just said, you have the people today who hear all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Yes. So everything in this Bible yes. is inspired by God. Yes. But it's not all applied. True. Because Pastor Tim said everything's not for us. Yeah, so even the passage, applicable. I've given you uh, all the land and every place you set the sole of your feet, that's inspired by God. Yes. But it can't be applied by me in the 21st century because I don't have a Palestinian covenant. <laughs> that's very true. So how do I make the <laughs> distinction? Well, um, most Old Testament texts would not apply to Gentile lifestyle because they're more... Uh, they're more assigned to a covenantal people. Uh, we're not covenantal people, so that covenant technically is not us. And the traditions are not ours as Gentiles. I'll say everything in New Testament moving forward can be applied because that's about more life application, you know, restructuring your life, kind of falling under the power of the Holy Spirit. Old Testament is a bunch of other practices that were covenantal. New Testament is a covenant, but it's for those moving from a Gentile world who didn't know this God that they're now, they're now introduced to. So everything New Testament is about correcting life. Old Testament is about some other so things. So then what do you say to the person who says <laughs> that tithing was Old Testament <laughs> and not to be applied in this one? Yeah, they, they do stretch that one. Um, it is, an, it is a, a, a tithing itself started in the Old Testament, right? But it didn't end there, Okay. right? We do hear conversations of tithing, giving in the New Testament. And Paul levels the playing field and says, however you want to receive, give that way. So right. technically, he's speaking of it, where your heart, if your heart is bountiful, then you give bountifully. If your heart is sparingly, you're, you give from that position. However the Lord leads you, you do such, right? But there is a conversation about giving 
and taking care of God's church. Now, in the New when, when, when you both talk about the limitations of application, and I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with it yeah. for more ways than you can imagine. Yeah. But let's go to Leviticus. Children of Israel coming out of Egypt, yes. they're frustrated. You know, they're, they're being told to go to this land. They don't know where they're going. They're trusting in a guy who they know, but they don't know. They don't really and know. he takes them over. And when we get to Le the book of Leviticus, God now gives them a list of foods they can eat yep. and not eat. He calls them <laughs> clean and unclean. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> Did that stop at the cross? Uh, the application yeah, yeah, of yeah. those principles. Did that stop at the cross? Or is that one of those principles God expects us to employ today? Mm. So, so when you when you look at that, the, the clean and unclean laws, it, you know, the scripture says that if we violate one law, we violated them all. Okay. Right. And so again, and, and we look at the New Testament concept, uh, concept where Christ comes, and and Christ comes to fulfill the law, and and He says, I come to fulfill it, not to abolish it, but the perspective is, I I came to to fulfill all that you could not do in the law, right? right? That's why I'm here. That's why I, I gave my life. That's, that's the work at the cross. Right. And so, so when we look at some of those, those clean and unclean laws, it, it would be for us today, it would be impossible for us to keep all of those laws. You know, there's 612, 613 yeah, laws where it would be impossible for us to keep. Again, we look at the New Testament, Christ comes, Christ comes to, to do what Adam could not do, right? And there is no there is no regulations on us in terms of okay, we got to kill a lamb and a sheep, you, you know, one, once Thank a year, the, the year of atonement. We have so so those things. Uh, again, when I look at the Bible from that perspective, it, the law is a ta it, the scripture says it's a taskmaster. Yeah. It's there to show me that I'm sinful. Yeah. But Christ comes to 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 to. Uh, to complete that. Okay. And so, so for me, I, I would not teach that, that the clean and unclean laws is something that we need to keep today. Even yeah. Paul says that, that <laughs> he's looking at me, uh, Pastor Brian. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I, I, I think yeah. that, that opens the door to my primary problem. Yeah. yeah. You know, the picking and the choosing of what to do. In an earlier broadcast, we talked about identifying God's intent. Yeah. Right. And so when we go back to Leviticus and we see the Lord being very, very specific yes. about animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, part of that, that uh, argument was the things that you're going to offer to me for yeah. a sacrifice, I don't want you to offer unclean things right. to me. Yeah. Okay, that's right. fine. Right. So these are the clean animals, these are the unclean animals. Right. But then when you go down now to this time yeah. with the advancement of science, you find that some of those unclean things he told us yeah. not to eat have a, a negative impact on our yeah, physical health. body. Yeah, sure. Sure you know, God says, don't eat shellfish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we find that shrimp and lobster and all those things raise cholesterol that right. can yeah. kill you. Right. Was he thinking that way? I, now, see, I, now, when you look at it from that perspective, I absolutely, because again, the Lord gives us wisdom. Yes. Right. And so and so there, there as 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 from our culture, we know that we're susceptible to high blood pressure, sure, sure. And high cholesterol. Sure. So it would behoove us yeah. as individuals who house the Holy Ghost yeah. to say that I'm not going to put anything in my body that's going to destroy my body. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I would agree that those are, those are more geared towards good health mm -hmm. okay. more than it's a law, you're sinning. Okay. And, and let's look at who he's talking to. He's talking to people that have to live through a desert. He's not talking to people who are just walking on the street, cool air conditioning, right? right He's right. talking to people that are going to have to survive through a desert lifestyle. And so he does know what makes the body work. Right. Right. You know, God is the author of all of it. He, he, he's constructed it. So he knows how the body works. So I'm, I'm hazarding the guess. Not only is it law, he's talking to law to priestlyhood, and he's dealing with also the expectation that of, of longevity. So I do want you to live through this wilderness experience, right? And only those who die are those who really doubt it. But the others were able to live, their clothes grew, their shoes grew, all these other things because there was something in place that they understood as a code. I think they saw it as a law, but I do understand ultimately he's also talking to people that have to live on. Now earlier you both agreed that we should try to understand the author's initial intent. Yes. And that is paramount for interpreting the passage. Can, yeah, correct. So I have Psalm 1. 
okay? <laughs> and we know that Psalms yes. are written to be sung. Yes. So David says, blessed is the man doesn't walk in the path of unrighteousness, nor sit in the seat of the scorner, blah, blah, blah. How do we define the seat of the scorner, yeah. which is where we are right now. Yeah. In the earlier uh, applications, Christian said that was the movies. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, in early days of Pentecost, yeah. David said, you're not supposed to sit in the seat of the scornful. Yeah. So you don't go to bars, you don't go to movies, yeah. you don't go to clubs, because sure. that's the seat of the scornful. But you can ride the subway, you can sit in the hair, <laughs> the barber shop, because we have not <laughs> distinguished Some seats what, the Dave, what, <laughs> what David, that's, Some that's seats my point. Yeah. That's yeah, my yeah. point. <laughs> that's my point. The misunderstanding of the heart. Yeah which comes from the lack of proper teaching and I understanding. Agree. I agree. Why put that in there? It almost appears that there's a, a, an implied confusion from reading the Word of God. So how, how do we get to the heart of it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you want to touch that first? Yeah, well, well I, again, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's poor hermeneutics, it's poor interpretation, yeah. okay. you know? It's, it's, you know, 30, 40 years ago, in church, we use scare tactics, right. mm -hmm. along with the Word of God, to scare us into salvation right. and holiness, yeah, right? right. <laughs> um, you know, even we talk about the shellfish and, you know, all of those things. You know, Jesus himself says, he says, what goes in you does not make you unclean. It's, it's what comes out of you. Mm -hmm. So it's in your heart that makes you unclean. Yeah. And so, again, it's getting to the heart of it. We have to, we have to recognize or know what's happening in the culture. Yeah. Who is this being written to? What's happening mm -hmm. in that particular time? What issues are we dealing with? And we all know this as preachers, that this is the, the systematic process that we go through yeah. to interpret properly what's happening. All right, yeah. stop. <laughs> I, I can't hold it. You said, Jesus says, it's not what goes in your body that defiles you. It's what's coming out of your heart. I agree. That's what he said. Yeah. But he's saying it in light of the Levitical instructions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he causing that middle? Is Jesus causing it by saying, all right, I know it said that you're not supposed to eat certain things. Right. But I don't want you getting caught up in that because it's not what goes in your body that defiles right. you. But according to Leviticus, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it so was, what's he doing? Yeah. I don't think he's building a divide in as much as he's trying to take the the uh, basically the the heaviness of the burden of trying to keep all those things in context. You can't do it. And so Christ is now saying, all right, since you can't do it, Tim is absolutely correct. All the, the, the entire Old Testament is summed up in him. And so now moving forward, we're able to have a little bit more grace, if you will, right? So we have more grace. It doesn't remove the fact that what you eat still can harm you. Right. I think what he does is he gives the newer believer uh, a, a basically a mind to discern what you should do. Or the right to sin. Or the right <laughs> to sin. Because I don't have to listen. So if God says, it's the right to if sin. God says, <laughs> if God says you don't eat any shellfish yeah. because I created it to clean the ocean. Yeah. Then Paul comes and says, whatever you say grace over is clean. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. So now yeah. I can eat my shellfish yeah. as long as I say grace over. Yeah. So once again, Without but, but proper the, understanding. So, so here's the audience. The audience is to Gentiles. He didn't say right. that to Jews, right? Right. So, so, we have, so then we have the right to defile our bodies <laughs> as long as we say grace over. <laughs> I think he understood the nature of Gentiles would not really understand maybe the, the actual reason why you couldn't. I think it would have caused more of a stir than it would bring them right into this walk. This is just my spiritual imagination. That's what we're here, here for. Right? So uh, it's, it's more to do with, yes, for this new Gentile who's used to excessive living, who's used to that indulgence. Okay, I'm not going to take all the indulgence away. However, your heart must be right before me. Okay. So we're not going to major in all the minor things, right? Do be moderate because scripture does say everything in moderation. So that's a, that's a New Testament okay. kind of idea. So he leaves room for the New Testament Gentile to find themselves maybe into a more of a life of discipline. Uh, the Jews were born disciplined. Gentiles had to learn a discipline. And I think that's, that's where the road meets a little bit of variation.
All right, now, gentlemen, I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling with the Bible. I yeah. mean, and, and 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 you're giving me more quicksand. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm confused by the confusion. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. And it's almost as if we set one covenant against the other. When on the one hand, you say Jesus said, "I come to fulfill it," and and, and careful understanding that is it's like I came to fill it in full, which suggests that there are gaps. Sure there are not. gaps in the reading, understanding, and application. Sure so not. we're back to what did God mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. now I come to the new covenant. Yes. And uh, the, for me, the new covenant starts at the book of Acts. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's for me. Because Jesus operated under the yes. old that's covenant. That's very true. So from that point on, yes. with the newness and the freedom of the Spirit, yes. does that freedom lead me into willful separation from the principles of the old? Can I jump in here? Yes, Can I do a ooh right. ooh? I yeah. think that's why Peter <laughs> had to eat chitlins. I think that's why he had to eat them. Now because you're stretching. <laughs> now you're stretching. Well, how about I say it this way? Peter was introduced to a very Gentile lifestyle of eating. And I think because it's for humans, when you start to make the object the thing that you shouldn't do, they start to worship the thing. I agree. Right? And so I think it was easy for Jews to say, well, I'm more better than you because I don't eat shrimp. I agree. Right? I agree. And so that builds a, a level of superiority, right, you know, self-righteous, all those other things. So I think it was necessary. Peter probably had an air about him that says, you know, who deals with those Gentiles? You know, why would you do that until he's exposed to their world? Yes. And now there's common ground. And so we're not going to make food the issue, I think, that right. the Holy Spirit is kind of... Food is not going to break us up. Right. Right. And so that's not going to be the issue. So now we're going to learn how to walk in step with one another. So, Peter, anything you eat now, Paul writes, anything, make sure you pray over it and bless it <laughs> because everything is good unto the Lord. I think it had more to do with breaking down religious barrier. And I can agree with that, but yes. I'm still back at the fundamental point. I know we're not going to solve it today, <laughs> but I, I'm at the fundamental point. The Bible Okay, let's let's phrase it in this manner. Why do people read the Bible? What are you looking for? Are you looking for the heart of God or permissions? In your experience, what do mm. you find Christians are looking for? The heart of God or permissions? I, I would like to say the heart of God. That, that's what I would like to okay, say. Okay, that's I, good. You know, that, that we, we read for the heart of God, yeah. for life instructions, mm -hmm. for life application, and to, to gain the, the, the will of the Lord. What is the will of the Lord for my life okay. while I'm here on this earth? What, what is and it you that you think God, the Bible's going to give you that? Absolutely. You hold to that? I, I think we go for the heart, but we run into the instruction. Okay. And, and that may start to build confusion, if you will, right? unless it's properly interpreted and you get good exercise. So I got the 21st century Christian who yes. says, the Bible speaks against adultery. Yeah. And an adulterous relationship is one that you're not married. Yeah. So why can't I have two wives? Well. If some cultures allow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because at the same time, the Bible's developing a holy culture. But if it's not a crime or if mm -hmm. it's not improper in some cultures, yeah. here, like, like drinking wine. I hear, I hear where you're going. Here in, here in yeah. America, we'll tell you if you're a Christian, you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. That's true. But in Italy, it's a national beverage. That's sure. very true. So if we're going to hell in America, if I fly to Italy, I'm not going to hell. <laughs> right, but the real prohibition is not on drinking, it's on yeah. drunkenness. Okay, right. but so, I can't get drunk unless I drink. Right, well, right. that's the easiest way not to get drunk, <laughs> okay. right? Yeah. That's so the individual who, who takes two wives legally, yeah. Right. In, the, in a culture, yeah. in, in America, culture it's, called, yeah. Yeah. it's called bigamy in yeah, America. Yeah. Yeah. But, but outside of here, in that culture, say uh, a place over yeah. in the Pacific Islands, yeah. he has two wives. They mm -hmm. do it. We look at that person and we say, you know that's wrong, that's wrong based on our understanding. Sure. Yeah. But is it a biblical mandate? Well, it becomes one uh, oh. later on when you, you know, well, let me, let me rephrase it. It becomes one for those who would like to assume leadership. So when he talks about, you know, you got to be the husband of one wife, you know, when you break that down, that means man with one woman. So you can't, you can't practice polygamy and say that I'm following scripture. You just can't do it. Although America now is introducing more polyamorous kind of situations, but 
in a holy culture, you only have one woman right. at a time. You don't have two. So th primarily the scripture is dealing with you can't have two. And who is he preaching to? But was to? that the heart of God from the beginning? Well, the beginning, I think one thing I'm learning about God is he does something that that's kind of weird to our concept, but he does it all the time. And he does seem to make concessions for fallen humanity. <laughs> yes. God, yes. He, <laughs> we ought to frame that statement. <laughs> we'll put it up. I got to jump in. I got to jump in. It's frustrating. I'm just saying, this, this is a frustrating yes. part about God because he does make concessions with fallen nature. And there are times that we see in Scripture that you can't overlook the fact yes. that it was allowed. Yes. Can't overlook the fact that, that David had more than one, that, yes. that Solomon had a thousand, yes. and yet God still promises blessing over their land, does all the good stuff. So, so there's some things. Let's just take the elephant out the room for those of you who are listening. <laughs> you, can't, you can't overlook it. We get it, right? But God makes conceptions or, you know, concessions, rather, for fallen nature. And then later on, he repackages it, rebrands it in a New Testament. They'll let Tim go. We only so, got a couple so, minutes. So, well, is we'll it, come is back it, to the next story. Is it God really making a concession, though? When we look at that concept, that polyamorous uh, uh, relationships, right? Yeah. David, yeah. Solomon, those, those men ended in ruin. Yes, they did. Because of though that very concept Agreed, sure. of having more than one wife. Agree totally. And so so when the scripture says what was written in times of <laughs> yes. uh, it was written for our learning. Yes. Learn right? from it. Yes. Learn from it. Right, because listen, we're all married and we've yeah. been married for several years. Yes, sir. I have a hard time with one wife. Yes, yes. yeah, yeah. I, I agree with <laughs> you yes. 100. And, and yes. so, and so I'm enough. not sure if it's God making a concession as much as it is God allowing them to, to choose choose their path? Well, we you we, know? we we to, we, to, we got to deal with to, that. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I, 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 it's, I, I, I'm going to hold it's my hard peace. hard because I, I don't look at I don't look at what happened to uh, those individuals um, Solomon David. I, I don't look at that as judgment. I right. look at that as consequences. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. so, yeah. in many mm -hmm. cases, mm -hmm. God simply says, "That's the choice you want to make. Yes. Right. This is what happens. So right. we have to walk through right. the consequences." of our decisions right. where we're looking for a biblical mandate. Yes. My, my, my feeling, you know, I'm, I'm a Presbycostal, so, yeah. you know, I got to have light <laughs> and heat. Yeah. And so for me, when I go back to Genesis, I mm -hmm. say, if you want to know anything, you go back to the beginning. Go back to the beginning. And so God brought one woman That's to right. Adam. Therefore, just one. Man, right. Just one. He mother. speaks singularly yeah. about right. it. It's singular. And so there are consequences, yes. which Solomon found out. Best yeah. example to yeah. him. Solomon's example is the best example. Right. He said he's, he left the heart of God for his women. Yes. And, well, and let's be clear, concessions don't mean condone. Right, right. Yeah. Well, we listen, we've oh run out goodness. of time, <laughs> but we're coming back. We're coming right we're coming back. back. <laughs> and we have to keep going. Is the Bible the word of God? And just where do you stand in applying these precious words from our sovereign Lord? Yes, the Bible does seem to be controversial. It is, it's conflicting. It's the most loved book and the most hated book <laughs> in the right. world. But it's still the number one bestseller. No matter how people talk about it, yeah. we're looking for ways to make it fit our lives. And that's our task, to help you look at the Word of God, examine its principles, but most of all, the heart of the one who wrote it. And that is the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come back and we're going to talk again about the legitimacy of the Word of God and how the body of Christ worldwide needs to get back to the Word of God and stop giving in to preacher ideation. We can't always rely on the words that come from flesh. We must adhere to what comes from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Thanks for joining us today. Today is a good day and you are victorious because the Word of God says you are more than a conqueror. Yes. It is our prayer that the Lord bless you and keep you, that the Lord turn his face towards you yes. and be gracious unto you, that the Lord just bless you with the light of his presence in all that you seek to do. You be blessed as you continue to stay in the Word of God. God bless you. The Christian and the Culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different.
There are times in life when the pull of this culture wears us down and leaves us feeling defeated. But the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. In his new book, The Christian in the Culture 2, Walking in Victory, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. reminds us of tools in the Word of God that the Christian must use to maintain a life of victory. Walking in Victory offers fresh insight about living for Jesus with a focus on walking in the Spirit and in the fruit thereof. Learn how to maintain your identity and purpose as a believer by ordering Walking in Victory. The Christian in the Culture 2, Walking in Victory, is available at ericlambertministries.org and wherever books are sold. Does God desire for his followers to be conformed to today's culture? Or are believers supposed to function, think, and be distinctively different? In his new book, Cancel the Culture, Securing Our Identity as Christians, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. provides guidance for the Christian trapped in a struggle for identity. Each chapter of the book presents a challenge for the reader to cancel a specific ungodly influence of modern culture. As these influences are abandoned, the special purpose of God's calling for His children will become clearer. Journey toward rediscovering your identity as a child of God by ordering your copy of Cancel the Culture. Visit ericlambertministries.org to order the book and find more resources that will enhance your walk with Christ. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. For more information about our media ministry or to partner with us, visit BethelDeliverance.org and go to the Media Outreach link to make a donation. You can also call 215-885-2585 to speak with a media representative. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.